Good evening. It is wonderful to see you. Thank you for coming out on uh, less than a pleasant evening of weather. Um, there are a whole group of people, including the adults you see standing behind me, all these kids, uh, other folks working with technical and uh, music and people behind the scenes who've worked hard uh, to prepare for this evening. We pray that you not only enjoy it, but you are inspired by it, that, that the Lord uses it to encourage you and uh, uh, speak to you uh, about spiritual things, uh, which, of course, uh, is our deep belief that that is the reason for ce celebration of Christmas. If you did not see the programs uh, coming in, there are some on uh, tables, glass tables, at the back of this room, just straight in front of me at the base of the uh, sound booth. And you feel free to walk over there and, and get some programs. Uh, they're the ones that look like this. And uh, that will help you uh, to, to understand the flow of the evening. The adults will begin. The children uh, will then be presenting their musical. And uh, they're going to be doing some things together. Uh, so we hope you have a, a good evening. If you need restrooms while you are here, uh, they are through those doors and immediately to your right and around a the corner. Um, there are people in the lobby if you have other needs and need to ask about that. And don't forget, there is a wonderful spread of food that is waiting us uh, after the program, so we'll be dismissed. And you're invited to stay for the fellowship time, which will be uh, in the Family Ministry Center to my left, uh, over to your right in the adjoining building. Let's pray together, and uh, we'll be ready to begin. Father, I thank you for this day that you made, and you made it for yourself, and you made it for us to enjoy, and uh, you've given us opportunity already this morning in various places to come together and to worship you, and we do that again this evening. We pray that, Lord, you will be honored and glorified by what we do and say in this building on this evening. Lord, use these and the preparation that they have done uh, to lift up the name of Jesus. May he be worshiped. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
The words of Robert Herrick's poem, written in the 17th century, still call to us today. What sweeter music can we bring than a carol for to sing the birth of this, our heavenly King? We answer that call and make room in our hearts to celebrate the birth of the Christ child. Just as we eagerly await the coming of spring after a cold and dark winter, the people of Israel yearn for the coming of the Messiah, the one whom the prophets foretold. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent a man, the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. Joseph traveled the long road from Nazareth to Bethlehem to be registered in the census with Mary, who was his betrothed. Mary was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger.
Suddenly, a great company of angels appeared to shepherds in a nearby field, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom God's favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And after they saw him, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who was born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And the star they had seen went ahead of them to where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They saw the child was with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened up their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
You know that Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem and visited by wise men from the east. The shepherds in the west came first and saw him best, but in the south the folks were last, not least. For when our Lord was born in the Holy Land, in Egypt, they knew nothing of this child. There, fair was the king, and Messiah meant nothing to those who lived upon or near the Nile.
Sweet for Will. It's time to get away for Will. But Egypt was just where Joseph took Mary and the baby Jesus not longer after his birth. To protect them from the murderous King Herod, they fled to the faraway land. How long did they stay? The Bible tells us they remained in Egypt until Herod was, was dead. So likely Jesus celebrated at least one birthday there. We can only imagine what Christmas in Egypt might have been like for Mary, Joseph, and their special baby sent from God. Do you know what day it is? It's your birthday. Happy birthday, my little godson. Joseph, can you believe how quickly Jesus has grown? No, Mary. It seems like yesterday we were on our way to Bethlehem, not knowing when to expect his birth. Well, right now I expect Jesus is thirsty. I think I'll go over to the well so you can get ready for the P-A-R-T-Y. Good idea. I'll go get the G-I-F-T-S. All right. Delta, she looked awful, just awful. Had on this old thing that bound her up from head to toe. I know that, that dress, Stephen, why it's older than the pyramids and not a bit flattered. Oh, what a shame. Her mother was such a beauty. It's certainly not the case of like mother, like daughter. No, Sheba, in that dress, it was more like daughter, like mummy. <laughs> oh, Delta, you're such a stitch. Did you hear that, Cleopatty? I believe they call her Mary. Oh, Cleopatty, sometimes you act just like a child. The Lord's given us a beautiful day, hasn't he? Well, it is a beautiful day. We'll give credit to Pharaoh if you don't mind. Of course, I understand. Jesus, watch Mommy pull up the water. 
Oh, he's such a little lamb. Yes, Jesus is love. Thank you. No, we're just here visiting from Israel. I knew it. I just knew y'all were from the north. Of course, Jesus. I didn't even have to ask. We can tell my dear. have been hard for Mary, so far from home, yet never far from the gossip, gossip, the questions, and the misunderstanding of those around her. But Mary was never alone, for just like us, she knew that God was always with her. Sweet little Jesus, what would I do without you?
The prophet said you'd be the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father. But to me, you'll always be Prince of Peace, King of my heart, royal companion and friend. Prince of Peace, King of my heart, my love for you will not end. My love for you will never, ever end. What she said? Maybe you're right. Maybe there'll be a reward for such information. Jewels, gold, and perfume. Well, let's not waste your time. Take a minute. Let's go. No, I'm going to stay here. Okay. Wait a minute. Maybe that's better. Cleopatra, you stay here while we go see Pharaoh. And if you find out any information that we should know, you come find us now. You hear? Come on.
the women from the well, aren't you? Nonsense. You were invited. Of course. Come sit here by me and Jesus. You all want to hear a story? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ooh, I like that word, yes. All right, let me think. Joseph's carpenter shop is a gathering place for the children. Oh. Not sure how much work he gets done while they're in there, but he sure enjoys their company. <laughs> Great practice for a new papa. <laughs> all right, children, this story is the best I've ever told you. Yes, those were all stories you could believe in your mind. But this story, you must believe in your heart. <laughs> One night, an angel brought the news that Mary would be the mother of God's child, the promised Messiah. But before Jesus could be born, everyone in Israel had to pay a tax in the city of their birth. Mary was great with child. But we placed her on a donkey and made the long journey. After many days, we could see the flickering lights of my hometown in the distance. It's very small, but it's the city of David, Bethlehem. sent hundreds of angels to tell the news.
Is everyone having fun? Yes. Oh, I like that word, yes. Here, boys and girls, I make gifts for everyone. when you don't have the answers to your questions. Is everyone having fun? Yeah. Oh, I like that word, yes. God sent y'all to Egypt? Perhaps. But when Herod found the news that Jesus, the prophesied Messiah had been born, his one desire was to kill Jesus. Children, you must always remember, there are some that seek to worship Jesus and others seek to destroy him. Now do you understand why we're celebrating Christmas in Egypt, Cleopatty? Yes, all too well. Thank you for more than you ever met, imagine. Goodbye, sweet Jesus. Goodbye, children. That was quick. I wonder where she has to go. Jesus looks sleepy right now. <laughs> I think we all could use some rest. Of course, our pleasure. Joseph, you rest while I tidy up. 
Uh, I think I will. Have you ever noticed how children easily recognize what is pure and holy? It is only as we grow older that we become more doubtful and suspicious. That's why even the most powerful adults rejected, despised, and even persecuted Jesus. Now, history gives no record of Jesus' presence in front of the Egyptian pharaoh. However, if it was, he would have been probably seen as Jesus as any other ruler saw him. A threat. The, the fantabulous pharaoh of ancient Egypt. Harold, Harold in the hall. Who is the pharaohest of them all? Pharaoh's fairest, the herald says. If I said something else, he'd strike me dead. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Okay, okay, I'm good now. Presenting the um, bells of the nautical mouth. Yeah. Okay, the never shy Sheba and the ever deceptive Delta. <laughs> Greetings, great Pharaoh. And how are you today? Let me double check. Harold, Harold in the hall. Who is the pharaohist of them all? Pharaoh's fairest, the, her the herald um, repeats. If I said something, if I told the truth, he'd strangle me. <laughs> <laughs> I love this kid. Now, ladies, what business do you have with the great pharaoh? Well, you know we're not ones to stick our noses into other people's business, but we just happened to overhear talk of a Hebrew king right here in Egypt. A savior, a messiah. A king in Egypt. Harold, Harold in the hall. Who is the pharaohist of them all? It may hurt me, whatever you care, but I must tell the truth. Jesus is Pharaoh's. Curses! No one will be greater than Pharaoh if I have to kill him myself. Kill him? What is this outburst? Oh, Cleopatty, you would be either one to come barging in like a child. You wouldn't harm the little king, would you? Oh, I can. I could, and I would. But why? Why? I'll tell you why. <laughs> This baby is a Hebrew, and he just may be the promised Messiah. Oh, woe is me. If he's the Messiah, he is the king of kings. So I better rub him out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh, let this baby go. No! Yay! The herald says, you are the pharaoh, you're the hottentot. He's just a baby, a threat he's not. 
Don't tell us you're afraid of one small child. You're the Pikahuna of the River Nile. <laughs> Is he a monarch? Is he a king? Is he Messiah? I think we made a big mistake. Why, if he's this serious, Jesus must be a king. Quick, girls, we gotta warn Mary and Joseph. Yes! What is it, Joseph? Were you dreaming again? Yes, Mary, but not just any dream. It was the angel that told us to come to Egypt. But this time, the angel said to go home with you and Jesus. Home? To Nazareth, to family and friends, and all that's familiar. Oh, Joseph, can we leave tonight? We can leave now if you want. Oh, it won't take me but a minute. Mary! Mary! Cleopatra and her friends. Mary, you must get things together. I, I am. And you must leave Egypt. We are. We are. What is this all about? Yes, God has provided a way of escape, just as God provides forgiveness. You forgive us? You must love Jesus, otherwise you would come to warn us. I do love Jesus. So do we. Yes, how could we worship a wicked old Pharaoh when we felt the love of the heavenly king? Cleopatra may act like a child at times, but this time she was right about Jesus. She was, because to become like Jesus, you must become like a child.
you better get going, Mary. But what about the children? I'll miss you so. Can you tell them goodbye for us? Just tell them that God called and we said yes. I think they'll understand. I know they will. Will we ever see Jesus again? Likely not. But just remember, once you've looked into the face of God, he'll remain in your heart forever. Goodbye, my sisters. Take care. Godspeed. Do you think they'll be okay, Cleopatty? Yes, God's not only watching over them. He's right there with them. They've gone back to Israel, just like the angel told them to. But we can. What do you mean, Sheba? We can set out on his birthday. That's right. And when folks see it, we'll tell them the story of Jesus' birth. That's a mighty fine idea, Sheba. That way we could celebrate Christmas in Egypt every year. Everyone listen to us. Everyone, grown-ups and children. Where are you this Christmas? In a faraway place? Or just far away from the Savior? Wherever you are, do more than just imagine meeting Jesus. Make him your Prince of Peace, your hope. Celebrate Christmas for the very first time. Christmas in Egypt.
Mr. Ken comes forward, Miss Vanessa and Mother, Miss Melody. I need you both to come on up here, squeeze in. These two ladies have done so much work that started way back, I mean, even before September when we started singing, they went through the work of picking the best that they could find for us to do together. They have spent so many hours together. They've spent so many hours with us. They have worked very hard. So we've put together a little something special for you to show our appreciation. You turn to the right here, ladies. We appreciate all your hard work. I told you it would be a good evening, and it has been. And uh, why don't you, in addition to expressing your appreciation to our two uh, directors of the choirs, uh, also do that for uh, the singers in the choirs, the kids, the technical crew, um, props, all the, the parents, you who put up with hearing that CD like 2,000 times. Uh, wasn't it worth it? Uh, to see your kids joyfully tell the story of Jesus. And uh, we just want to say thank you to everyone. Let's do that. We truly pray that if you do not know Christ as your Savior, that you will consider his rightful claim on your life. And would you consider this Christmas season a decision to trust him with your entire being, to trust him for salvation and trust him for all the needs that you have in your life. If you have any questions about what that means, please seek one of us out. We would love to talk with you about that. Why don't you go ahead, before we have fires break out, if you haven't blown your candle out, go ahead and bl <laughs> blow that out. Give it a minute to cool before you tip it so that the wax doesn't go everywhere. Um, that's literally housekeeping directions, right? And fire safety directions. Um, we've got food, and we have a space set aside for you to just relax and spend a few minutes together uh, before you go home this evening. Let me pray with you. And after this, there are two sets of hallway uh, connectors to the Family Ministry Center. One is out this set of doors. The other at uh, the lobby. Uh, turn to your left as you go toward the lobby and you'll see uh, the tables and uh, that space next door waiting for you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the um, wonderful music we heard tonight. We pray, God, that that music will ring in our ears, not just the tunes or the lyrics, but the story that they told, God, of, of how you love us enough that you sent your son so that we could be saved. And Lord, I pray that that would be the experience of each person who is here tonight. We pray that over these next few weeks, as many of us have some extra time off from work, that we would, we would enjoy time with each other, time with our families, but also time with you. Lord, make this a meaningful, important Christmas season in each of our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we thank you, God, for all your gifts, for the food we're about to enjoy. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.